Hello again, Struck Club. There's less than a month until Diablo 4 launches fully. And uh, here I am with another build video, the Mad Dog Druid build setup, ready for launch full uh, with everything uh, you need to know, such as skill trees, unique items, legendary aspects, uh, sockets and gems, gear rows, paragon boards. Um, hopefully, um, it's, uh, it's all the info one might need. I might have missed some stuff. But um, here it is, uh, a very interesting setup, I might say. Setup that um, permanently uses the werewolf form, um, thanks to the Mad Wolf's Glee unique item. And mind you, I decided for the sake uh, of the build to not take an ultimate skill, so that we can have one more regular non-ultimate skill. I felt that taking an ultimate skill won't improve the build as much, um, as having six non-ultimate uh, skills in the setup uh, specifically and having more passives. Hopefully it, it, it turns out um, fun. Uh, definitely um, looking forward to checking this build out eventually. It's all about poison and lightning and companion wolves um, and rabies and the wolf spreading rabies. Sure, you have the werewolf skills like Shred, like um like a bird how like storm strike actually is our base skill because of the lightning which is not a werewolf skill and we're using uh, hurricane again but we're also using bestial rampage and our wolves benefit from it uh, so i hope you enjoyed buckle up and let's go when it comes to the skill tree that's what i like starting with and this is what it looks like on a build planner on Watrix build planner um, the build calculator. So as you can see, um, I, I'll, I'll, I'll show you quickly here, but then I need to switch to my to my spreadsheet because from there I can check uh, the different options and tell you why I took one and not the other. Uh, quickly zooming in on the boons. So you might want to um, wonder what this is. It seems like you can specialize in one of those four categories and you pick one category to specialize in, obviously. So you pick one per category of the boons and in the specialized you pick two. I've taken the crit strike chance here and the crit strike damage, specializing in the eagle. Then from there I decided it's best to get reduced damage from elites, from um, snake, critical strikes with shape shifting skills heal you for X maximum life and here energize lucky hit, dealing air damage has up to 15% chance to restore spirit. This one, if you, if you don't have uh, the need for spirit, this one is great as well, um, and um, this one is also amazing. So avoid this obviously because we don't have an ultimate skill. Um, but yeah, this is um, this is that. So let's quickly go um, show you the skills uh, icons from my website. So we have Storm Strike, we have Shred as I mentioned, but how Wolves, Hurricane, and Rabies. Um, there's no ultimate and then we're using bestial rampage now here you can see storm strike i prefer the vulnerable rather than the two additional targets on shred i prefer having the poisoning because it's a poison build rather than this one then um then the second and third attack performing a dash in addition and the critical strike damage being increased for the skill um over here I've taken Predatory Instinct, I must have, um, I think, uh, especially considering we are a close range build. Here some of you might prefer to get the movement speed, uh, I think it's not needed, I'd rather spend those points in damage uh, or survivability. But how I love the spirit version, if you think, uh, okay, with the boon uh, I have plenty of spirit, then consider switching to the attack speed version, this build benefits greatly from attack speed. Wolves, just a single point in Wolves, as, as well as Budhau, only a single point, as well as Storm Strike, only a single point, but Shred is maxed. Uh, in the Wolves, uh, I decide to go for Brutal Wolves for that attack speed bonus. I think we should be fine, we, we shouldn't need the Fortify. If you really think um, the Wolves are underwhelming and the crit strikes, um, um, giving them attack speed is not worth it, then definitely switch to, to Fortify. Um, if you need that survivability of the wild, again, boosting our companion damage for the wolves. 
Then Hurricane maxed out and Rabies maxed out. Uh, major, major skills for the build. Um, enhanced Hurricane, um, obviously Enhanced Rabies, obviously. For Hurricane, I decided to go making vulnerable enemies vulnerable for 3 seconds, a 15% chance, rather than, than enemies affected the, and by dealing less damage. For Rabies, instead of spreading faster, I decided to, to make it deal its total poisoning damage in 4 instead of 6 seconds, because the Wolves can help us spread Rabies thanks to a legendary item. So spread-wise, um, we are fine in terms of that. Um, elemental exposure, two points only because we didn't have enough. Charged atmosphere, one point only, just to have the proc. Bad omen maxed out, and as you can see, I have also uh, put two points into electric shock, which I still think is perfect for this setup. Um, next up, we have stuff like neurotoxin. One point, more than enough, just so we can unlock and venom and um, and toxic quals, maxing out both and venom and toxic quals. Um, then again, no ultimate active skill, but we are taking an ultimate passive, which is defiance as well as the follow up nature, nature of disaster. Both of those at three points. And after that, we have bestial rampage, the cherry on the top. Again, um, this would be what it would look like on my website when you check this setup, um, and this uh, this link should be um, on my spreadsheet uh, as soon as I publish it. The unique item I think works well for this beast uh, for this beast of a build would be Mad Wolf's Glee, which kind of gives us uh, the 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 name of the the build, the Mad Dog build. Mad Wolf's Glee, um, werewolf form is now your true form, and you gain plus two ranks to all werewolf skills. It has physical damage, it has poison damage, it has damage reduction from poisoned enemies, and it has movement speed, which again, you don't need the like Anthropic Speed, Digitrade, Gate, or whatever it's called, um, as much considering you get movement speed from this chest armor, mind you, chest armor. Um, and this is such a good item. Um, obviously, um, you would be stacking it with other bonuses, um, and obviously, um, you being permanently wolf means you probably would, would have zero times when you are switching out of a wolf form um, in this build. The way I've set it up, you'll see in a moment why. Regarding reg legendary aspects, um, this is the shortlist. I'll quickly show you the shortlist and then move on to the details of each of them. In the helmet, I put Storm Shifter's aspect, Amulet Knight Howard's aspect, Chest. The unique item goes here, but until then you can use Aspect of Might. There are some alternative options. Um, eventually, I'll talk about those in a moment. In the pants, Vigorous Aspect. In the gloves, Aspect of the Wild Rage. Boots, Exploiter's Aspect. Ring Aspect of the Tempest, uh, Ring 2, Storm Beast Aspect. One-handed weapon and off-hand would be Aspect of the Alpha on the one-handed weapon, Storm Quo on the off-hand. And if for whatever reason you decide to, to use a two-handed weapon instead of one-handed, Storm Quo Aspect has to go and you have to keep Aspect of the Alpha. I've shortlisted two Alternative unique items. In case you're getting super unlucky and Aspect of the Might doesn't drop, you could consider Andario's Visage, which is Helmet, um, or Storm's Companion, which is Pants. And due to the nature of this setup, um, since we are using unique item in the chest slot, which goes for defensive or utility, it would be no problem to move um, to move the Storm Shifter here instead of Aspect of Night Might, and to put Andario's Visage in the Helmet slot, which there it is, Andario's Visage. Um, chance to trigger Nova, Lucky Hit, All Stats, Attack Speed, Life Steal, mind you, very good synergy and Poison Resistance. Uh, or alternatively, again, remove Aspect of Might, put Vigorous Aspect where Aspect of Might was. Emptying the pants for Storm's Companion, which gives you companion skill damage, companion movement speed, big chunks of it, potion drop rate, ranks to wolves, four ranks to wolves, and your wolf companions are infused with the power of the storm, dealing lightning damage and gaining the storm how ability. Um, again, super, super fun 
Um, both of those as alternative setups. If you're really are, um, not working with the Medwood clients, it's super easy to, to just rework the setup to fit. Now let's show you quickly what each one does. Night Howard, Bird Howard increases crit strike chance by 5 to 10% um, additive. In addition, Bird Howard also affects nearby companions and players for 3 seconds. This is why we put it in the amulet because this 5 becomes 7.5 and this 10 becomes 15%. This is additive crit chance. Um, very useful. Aspect of the Alpha, your Wolf Companions are now Werewolf Companions. Werewolf Companions deal additive 75 to 100% additional damage and can spread rabies, as I mentioned. Your Companions gain the bonuses from the Bestial Rampage passive, which is this one, when while in Werewolf um, um, form um, gain attack speed, so they would have um, permanent attack speed all the time, uh, it seems. Um, then um, the next thing you can um, do is um, this one, as I mentioned, um, hurricane damage increased um, by X additive um, uh, for each second while active, and it's active for uh, at least 8 seconds. And then storm quo, critical strikes with shred deal um, X percent, 20 to 30 percent of the damage dealt as lightning damage to the target and surrounding enemies to help with AOE. And then Exploiter must have on every single build, in my opinion. Um, you have increased crowd control duration, but the mo more important part is the, the multiplicative increase damage to unstoppable enemies. Bosses, big big enemies, um, tough enemies would be unstoppable for a big chunk of the time during a fight, especially when you're solo, and especially if you don't have a crowd control focused build. Storm Shifter, while Hurricane is active, gain plus two ranks to your shape shifting skills. Perfect. So this two ranks to, to shapeshifting skill stacks with the two ranks to werewolf skills from the Mad Wolf's Glee, making things like Shred, um, like Bloodhow, um, like Rabies, stronger. Um, next up, as you can see here, we have Storm Beast aspect. Storm skills have up to X percent chance to gain spirit, and your base Storm kills, uh, skills are now werewolf skills, meaning Storm Strike will count as a shapeshifting werewolf skill. Um, for various things to proc. Um, and then we have, um, as I said, um, Vigorous, um, 10 to 15 percent damage reduction while shapeshifted into a werewolf, which should, which should be all the time. And Aspect of Might uh, as a temporary basic skills grant you damage reduction, not a bad thing to, to keep in the chest, but it's optional, you can put whatever you want there, as long as it's defensive or uh, utility that fits. Regarding sockets or gems, I've shortlisted six gems that could work uh, for various swats. For the weapons, I would recommend something like the ruby for overpower damage. Not, not, as, um, not as good on, uh, on a werewolf build as it's on a werebear build, so probably not high on the priority list. But critical strike damage to crowd control enemies with this build should work well because we should have plenty of immobilize. Um, and other crowd controls. So Sapphire um, definitely um, seems to work well. Amethyst. Damage over time. Again, Poison build, this should work, uh, obvious synergy. Um, no need to explain much. Um, Emerald, critical strike damage to vulnerable enemies. It should work well. Again, we have uh, various ways to apply vulnerable. Um, armor, Skull, Ruby, Sapphire. So healing received, uh, we do have healing from um, things like um, like li lifesteal, if you take the lifesteal item, or um, things like um, blood how definite healing there. Um, so worth it, and then um, the sapphire, as you can see, has damage reduction while fortified. And you should have some fortify with this build, again, not as much as a wear wear bear build, so... Um, not that great. And diamond is good for the resistances, unless you, you need um, some resistance to other stuff. All resistance obviously good, but um, it's three times less, roughly, than, than fire, poison, shadow, lightning, or cold resistance. So if you need to patch up resistances, obviously, put the right stuff. You only have three jewelries, two rings, one amulet, so it's not going to be that many to, to, to juggle. And uh, again, I've included that information here. Um, I probably am missing one of the, the gem types here that I might have to add. Um, the amethyst, yeah, uh, I'll add it later before I publish this, but uh, hopefully it's clear about the gems. Regarding gear roles, 
on my website and on my spreadsheet for this um, for this build, I have shortlisted two categories. I do that for all the builds. Uh, one category is high priority in this uh, website. It is in orange, but the thing at the top of the orange list doesn't uh, mean necessarily higher priority than the, the thing at the bottom. I would say all of those are uh, roughly equal priority. Sure, some should be better priority than others, but I didn't um, go through the trouble of arranging them in, in order of priority. Um, I just split them into high priority and low priority um, lists. And the same here with uh, white uh, being the orange and blue being the, um, the, the golden color. So let's go through the stats and tell you why I took um, those. Keywords to consider are crit chance, crit damage, damage, um, companions, resistances, cooldown reduction, lucky hit, overpower, not as much um, needed but still good to have, and the types of damage, lightning, poison, and physical. Those are the three types of damage you should look for, so skills that have that. Be it critical chance, critical damage or damage, or physical, lightning, poison, um, should be fun. Um, in terms of categories of skills, core, rat, companion, werewolf, shape-shifting, nature, and storm. Look for those categories. Each of those should work greatly for the build. Be it critical chance, critical damage, damage with those skills, lucky hit chance with those skills. Um, then elites, another keyword not to... Um, not to forget, there's a, there's an elemental type of damage or type of damage to elites. Crit chance, crit damage with um, certain types of damage again. Crit, um, crit chance, crit damage uh, uh, with certain types of damage against elites. Um, again, I think this one is just repeating itself. I'll remove it. Um, there's damage reduction after killing an elite. Um, damage for X seconds after killing an elite. Uh, crit strike chance against close enemies, another keyword to consider. So damage, crit strike chance, crit strike damage um, to against close enemies. The same goes for crowd control, crit chance, crit damage, damage to crowd control, um, and vulnerable, crit strike chance against vulnerable, crit damage against vulnerable, damage to vulnerable. Then there's damage while shapeshifted, damage while in werewolf form, damage while uh, healthy, fortified generation, damage while fortified, chance when struck to fortify. Lower priority probably would be all stats, companion movement speed, damage versus injured, um, up to X chance to, uh, to execute non-injured uh, elites, um, crit strike chance against injured enemies, damage versus healthy enemies, weapon damage, I'm not sure that even exists, um, but um, as a role, uh, I think it just exists somewhere out there um, in the back end, but probably not as a role. Spirit uh, generation, regeneration on Q, movement speed, attack speed, uh, willpower, the main attribute of the druid, and resource generation. Hopefully this is clear uh, regarding that. The list again, you could always look at it on my website or the spreadsheet. Next up are the Paragon boards. Um, you might take some popcorn because this is the longest section normally of that video of those builds. So I've included, as usual, two build setups. One with all the maxed out points from Renown, uh, from level ups and Renown. Um, so the 200 points from level up and, two, and, and 20 points from Renown. And this one is uh, what it would look like if you, let's say, have zero points from Renown and are level 95 Druid. Um, which means if you have, which you should have by that time, all the 20 points from Renown, you should be able to achieve this setup at level 90. Because 20 points are 5 levels worth of um, Renown. Actually, it's 4 levels worth of Renown, so you should be uh, at level 90. Actually, no, it is 5. It is 5. You get 4 per level. So yeah, at level 90, you should have this setup. Let's start uh, one by one, and eventually I'll show you as, um, in, in what order I'm taking things. Starting with the, the starting board, we're going uh, to the to the right hand side to take the damage, damage and life, this little life, damage, skipping this life, moving over here, taking willpower, int, dex, willpower, and here we're putting the werewolf. It's a great starting um, glyph. 
For every five willpower purchase within range, you deal plus 9.6 increased damage while in werewolf form. And for this build, that should be most of the time, if not all of the time. And if you get 40 willpower in this tree, uh, in, in this cluster here, you get 10% um, damage reduction while in werewolf form. I strongly recommend getting this 40 willpower because for every five you get 9.6 increased damage while in werewolf form. It's a very good early start. Um, of your endgame journey. And uh, there's easy to get willpower here and here. So you just um, go here, pick, pick, then um, damage, and maybe take this damage willpower as well. And then go here, int, damage, willpower, willpower, go up, damage, strength, int, int, exit. And that way you have one, two, three, four, five things that give you willpower. Six with this one and seven, eight, because this one is ten. Eventually we will return and fill the rest of the willpower nodes like this one, this one, that one, and this one, and that one. But eventually. Now for this next board, as you can see, it's the heightened malice, which is over here. Um, you're not taking that right away. First you're um, going this way here. Um, and I would suggest maybe going this, 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 this. So you have dangerous to elites that are poisoned, dangerous to elites that are poisoned, some willpower. Little wind on the way. Uh, you have an option. If you don't need the int, you can skip this int and take this willpower. This is an option. Um, it's up to you. Five willpower or seven int. But int would be needed here and there, so having that little extra two might not be that bad. Here in the glyph socket, we're putting um, tracker tracker. For every 5 decks purchased within range, you deal 9.6 increased damage to poison targets. Even bosses should be poisoned, because it's not considered a crowd control, so the unstoppable shouldn't prevent them from doing that. So I, I decided to focus on something that can be reached easily as the first glyphs that I take, rather than something that has some tricky conditions, like damage to crowd control and damage to vulnerable and so on. Although vulnerable applies to bosses easily as well. Um, so... This one also additional bonus if you meet the 25 decks poisoning damage effect was 33% longer. Which is perfect. We want to get that uh, before we move on. So that's why we, we take these decks here eventually and these decks here eventually. But before that, we want to, to get uh, damage to poisoned enemies decks, um, damage to poisoned enemies willpower decks, damage to poisoned enemies, damage to poisoned enemies. Uh, and then we take these decks uh, and these decks uh, before we exit the board. And exiting the board on this side, decks, willpower, decks, obviously. Um, here, Dench to Poisoned Enemies and Dench to Elites take the whole fucking cluster and move up. Um, then over here, you have choices to make. Do you take this cluster first or do you take um, this road first? Why did I take this road and not that road? I mean, I was, I was checking which one would be better. Um, and since we need to exit through here anyways, and it's the better um, place to exit from, um, I think what you should do is probably um, first take this little cluster here, um, then um, go this way with strength and willpower, and strength and willpower and dex mostly on the way, taking this poison resistance, poison resistance, maybe this poison resistance in life, why not? It's on the way, it's only one point. Um, and then um, taking this uh, heightened malice. While there are three or more poison enemies nearby, you do increase damage. Not that great on, against single target bosses um, um, that don't have um, ads. So that's why I hope the developers here see this as an opportunity to make a boss or uh, or a, or a big uh, elite enemy, big uh, big mini boss like the the, the butcher, counting as three poisoned enemies for this passive. Otherwise, this is an extremely underwhelming passive um, for, for single target fights. So they need to make a boss count as three targets for this one. If they haven't already, um, that should be something they should really, really consider as a balancing patch. to Make it worth picking. Otherwise, uh, I would just save those points, which is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 points and put them elsewhere. Because it's it just, they, they really need to make uh, a boss count as three poisoned enemies for the passive itself. Next, we're uh, taking the Wust for Carnage um, board. 
which gives you crit strike, uh, crit strikes with werewolf skills restored to spirit. This should sort out uh, um, to a certain extent uh, problems with spirit if you if you still have them by that time. Uh, on the way to it, we are taking werewolf skills damage and critical strike damage. The whole fucking cluster uh, invest into it. It's worth it. Um, taking willpower and dex on the way rather than int. Um, then over here, white detour, and then boom, 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 moving on to Fang and Quo. 240% bonus to all magic nodes within range. Meaning all of those blue ones are boosted. We don't really need much of them, but the werewolf skill damage is worth it. This gives you, I've done the, the calculation, this gives you from 5 to 17, which is 12 times 3, which is again 36, um, 36 additional werewolf skill damage. Uh, without needing to to take um, maximum willpower notes or whatever in here to, for that extra bonus that mm, gives you wow in werewolf or werebear form close enemies taking increased damage from you. Obviously, you might want to get that um, that that maxed willpower, and eventually we should be getting it. If I if I forgot to take it, then then one point should go over here for that willpower, um, and it could uh, could be removed from from some place where where it's not needed. Uh, it's not really must have because you probably won't need that um, that that twelve percent uh, more than some of the other stuff you're taking. On the exit, I recommend taking this route rather than the other route. Willpower, 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 int two times instead of strengths and dex and stuff. Uh, and then on this side, what we do have here is the next board called um, ancestral guidance. Ancestral Guidance is over there, so again, more spirit related stuff. Since we have plenty of spirit generation, we might as well get Ancestral Guidance, which is after spending 75 spirits, you deal um, multiplicative 30 increased damage for 5 seconds. We should have no problem reaching that one. Um, this one we don't need because basic skill damage, we're not um, building around it as much, but we can take it later. Over here, um, on the way to this one, we are taking this dex node because it will be needed. Um, you could take it later though, you could rush, rush the glyph socket first. And that for every 5 dex purchase within range, core skills deal increased crit strike damage, which is again, you want to spam that shred as much as possible. And this is massive amount of increased crit strike damage multiplicative. Um, you, can get, you can get a ton of dex here. You can see when, when I filled it later, um, I got 39 decks, which is 35 for the, for the, um, for the uh, divided by 5 for every 5 decks uh, bonus. So you're taking Harmony, Core Skill Damage, Willpower, Core Skill Damage, Core Skill Damage, Core Skill Damage, some Mint here, which cannot be avoided. Um, then on this side, you have Resistance to All Elements and Willpower, decks, um, decks, Resistance to All Elements, mostly for the decks you're coming here. Um, you want to, before you leave that, to have that 25, in our case 29, so taking these decks and then taking that decks. And moving on, um, on the way to, to, to this cluster and that cluster. What you could do is, you could rush this one, or you could take this core skill damage first, with a basic skill damage on the way, skipping this and skipping that, because basic skill damage is not a priority for you right away. Some maximum spirit and some maximum spirit and life are worth getting for those two points. Um, uh, especially this one having a bonus if you meet a certain um, intelligence uh, requirement, which again um, helps you figure out why we took some intelligence in certain places, where there was the five, uh, five uh, willpower, um, seven int choice. On the way to here, maximum spirit, spirit on kill, uh, spirit on kill, Maximum Spirit, Spirit on Q, and boom, Ancestral Guidance. And at this point, um, we are done with the level 95 Zero Renown, or level 90 Maximum Renown. And we move on to the Fewers, after taking um, this, um, this one thing, this one cluster. I think this cluster is definitely worth it. Uh, it is located in the Thunderstruck. We don't need the Thunderstruck stuff. But we do need this one cluster here. So 
So in that crit strike damage, which can be doubled, and damage to crowd control the enemies. Crit strike damage, crit strike damage, crit strike damage, and we have to take this damage to crowd control the enemies. We're skipping that one. After this, as I said, it's filling. What should you prioritize filling first? First, fill here. Fill all the willpower you can get for this damage um, while in werewolf form. Then fill this one. Fill um, increased damage to poisoned targets. And fill the damage to, um, to crit strike damage with core skills. You might even do that before the poisoned ones. But first, I would probably suggest the werewolf. Then this. And as you can see, um, this board needs to be rotated. Do you see that the change? We enter through this side. And this one is at the top. But before you attach this board, you need to rotate it. Must do that, otherwise it won't let you. So you rotate this board, so this one from here moves there. Uh, and uh, and you, you're connecting those uh, here. You see that? Um, you, you're connecting it um, that way. O over here. So you're taking um, this, this resistance to all elements. As you can see here, and you're connecting through there. Overall, um, I hope you can see the differences in the boards and that I have made and which notes I have taken. Uh, and eventually, if you if you can think you can find um, an extra point, take another willpower here for this one to get that um, damage to close enemies. You could sacrifice some spirit-related stuff, maybe, um, or something like that. That's not as important. To get notified when I upload more content like this one or other builds and guides for water and not so water games, you can subscribe to my channel and hit that bell button to not miss out on notifications. As well as uh, keep in mind there's something called memberships on YouTube which lets you be a paying member for my channel to get access to perks such as emotes and badges made by me as well as the option to get one-on-one uh, -on -one tutoring for the very basics of Adobe Photoshop, Premiere and After Effects. And memberships can be cancelled at any time if you no longer want to be a member. Uh, thanks for watching all the way until the end. Struck web, keep it cool, until next time and goodbye.